to look into uh, into the meaning of your people. You have to to know everything of them. You have to know their uh, their families. You have to know what they are leaving at home and what they are thinking of. And uh, you must be familiar with everything. A crew of a boat is like a big family, and you have to know everything. You have to know uh, the the differences with what they have with their wives, or if not, and uh, everything. And uh, um, that is, uh, as we say, kameradschaft, comradeship of a submarine crew. Well, there was the turning point uh, was, for my knowledge, May 1943, when we lost uh, 42 boats in one month. And um, that meant uh, that the tide was against us now. Why? Well, as we uh, have known later on, there, there was a break into the code of uh, our Enigma system. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the Allied had, uh, uh, not, uh, had uh, done a lot uh, to uh, break the code and to uh, decipher the, crow, the code. And, um, they had a lot of people working in this field and uh, that was uh, not a lot of scientists and uh, they succeeded uh, that uh, in the uh, i think from uh, 1940 uh, beginning of 44 and end of 43 they already were able to decipher our our messages that meant they knew exactly where the submarines were positioned and so they could evade them. And uh, that was a great success uh, for the uh, Allied. The losing rate was very high. It was per month round about 20 boats were lost and uh, that is my critics, even at the time when there was no chance at all for submarines. They were sent out and uh, even without snorkel. And you know what a snorkel means. It means that uh, a submarine has the capability to keep diving, to keep submerged with the aid of this snorkel device. And so the possibility to survive was bigger and greater. But only, but at the end of the war, there were only a few snorkels were uh, operating and uh, uh, the development in the whole submarine field uh, was not fast enough to meet, to meet the uh, other side, uh, the Allied side, and uh, yes, we uh, went into the Bay of uh, Narvik, and uh, we had to take a position at the entrance of the bay, uh, move, moving uh, on periscope depths, and we were hitting the ground, a rock below the uh, below the sea. And we were coming up a little bit out of the water with, the, with our turret. And my commanding officer, he uh, said, oh, now we, they will see us. And uh, he draw back, drew back with high speed and uh, and he didn't move the torpedoes, he was, he was closing the torpedo tubes and the war spite was passing us with the four destroyers, went into the harbor 
and was destroying our small force of torpedo boats and destroyers in Narvik. Uh, but anyhow, the reaction of uh, my commanding officer at that time was, uh, from my point of view, wrong. And uh, so it came, so di the disaster, the war spite was destroying our nearly, nearly all our destroyers. And uh, then they were coming out again, and, uh, but uh, that I never forget. I never forget. Well, I succeeded uh, in launching uh, four torpedoes uh, from the front torpedo tubes, and then I returned the boat, and uh, then uh, I uh, could launch the fifth torpedo. And uh, I, as I uh, saw, they were hitting uh, ships in the convoy, and uh, then I was uh, attacked by uh, a destroyer, and he was following us. And he came very, very, very close. And I could see already the bridge of the destroyer. And uh, suddenly this destroyer, and we had full speed ahead, uh, uh, and uh, with uh, additional, the engines of the, uh, of the electrical machine, and we, everything, and the waves come over our our boat and were hitting us sometimes, fortunately. But uh, the, the destroyer came closer and closer, and suddenly he made a turn through water, uh, through depth charges, and uh, then we had the opportunity to got a bigger distance to the destroyer and uh, he lost us, and we lost him, and what was the reason for his uh, turning and throwing deck charges? At that time, the uh, radar, the radar was, uh, had limitations. The space uh, on board of a submarine is uh, very limited and uh, there, is, uh, there are not only, uh, um, there are hammocks always in the, in the front room, in the uh, central, central room, and uh, in these hammocks there are not lying people. No, there are lying breads, and after a certain time uh, these breads are not looking like breads, but they're looking like rabbits because they have shimmel, as we call that. They, have, uh, they, are, they are white, and uh, we have to take away these white, uh, uh, these white uh, things and, uh, before we can eat them. Um, that is, the food, of course, is uh, very, very uh, bad, and only, only uh, we are we are eating something out of doses, uh, and uh, uh, it is, uh, of course, prepared. Some things are prepared for a long trip, but uh, most of it, after a certain time, it, uh, you cannot eat it. And uh, uh, that is, uh, therefore, from the point of health, life on board of a submarine, of course, is uh, very, very limited and uh, not without uh, danger. Normally, normally uh, our depth of our rating depth was 100 meter. Uh, and uh, under special circumstances, uh, we went deeper, we went down to 150 meters. But under the influence of depth charges, when there was no light in, in the whole uh, submarine, only some flashlights uh, to see the instruments, 
but no, but uh, we had no, uh, it, it was no light in the, in the submarine. Then we went down and suddenly we saw on one of the manometers, we saw, whoo, now we are, and uh, we have more than 250, 250 meters. And we heard already the cracking of the steel plates and uh, the wooden parts were marching in into the room and, and so on and so on. But uh, then, of course, we managed uh, to find uh, again uh, to come come up again, and uh, and sometimes uh, we had even to uh, put some air into our tanks because uh, uh, to come to come higher. But then, when we were in again on hundred meters, then we opened the uh, tanks so that the air could evade. And um, so it was always a balance there between life and death, of course. But I must say, I never was afraid so that I was not able, let me say, to act, to react. I always have uh, had uh, a very awoken conscience, and uh, I never was afraid in my whole life. That is a constitutional uh, benefit I have, but uh, it is so. And of course, that has some an influence to my crew because they looked at the commanding officer, and uh, with, and they uh, had, as I already said. They relied on me, and uh, they said, okay, when he is not afraid, then we don't need to be afraid. 